drip hop. Ding 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 ding. Bam. Hey, yo. Ready? Oh yeah, I was just, I was just, <laughs> just having fun. Yeah. Okay, I'm fucking spitting her coronavirus. No. <clears throat> What's up, y'all? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Trado Without a Radio. You already know Trado. Renee from the other day. Yep. What's going on, man? What are you doing? Uh, man, you know, I'm out here just living my best life, trying to shake hands with as many people as I can. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't. What? Well, the... That's what they said, right? You got to shake hands. No. See, you got to. Always gotta, touch your face. You got to bring them in and hug them. Oh, give them a nice little yeah, hug. Give them a good you know, sniff while you're in there. <laughs> just all up in there. Right. Yeah, just you know. Get in there. Bro, how no. weird would that be? Just hug a stranger and be like, Don't worry. Coronavirus free. And like. <laughs> How awkward would that be? <laughs> but you're actually super sick because you're giving it to them for free. The like coronavirus oh, free. Like free hugs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get it for free. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to pay to get the... T- Come here, sir. Come free. here, sir. You look like you could use a free coronavirus. Oh, man. Damn. Yo, but honestly, that's not funny. <laughs> no. Like, uh, we were just talking about it off air. Some just, real shit. Some real shit's going on. Um, I was listening to this podcast and they pretty much like we're interviewing people in china that are like being uh quarantined Quarant- yeah quarantined yeah like what that, imagine not being able to leave your house like oh well, i mean it's for the better of the nation i guess i guess in a way Damn. But, I, mean, I guess in china they don't really have a choice the government says it and they have to do it it's not like oh, here yeah. where i feel like here people would be like oh can't leave my house all right but and like go out and, and like, go out spread god knows what yeah yeah that'd be weird damn we're off to a great start uh <laughs> so now that everyone's nice and depressed yeah uh no welcome back yeah. to another episode um today we're gonna be going over semi going over this uh movie uh screening that we went to this week for a ben affleck film a ben affleck film yes. called look at him waiting until this <laughs> until, until my it, screen until it unlocks <laughs> yo the way back featuring ben affleck Janae Gavanker, Makila Walk. God damn, what's up with these weird ass names? Yeah, I know. Makila Ma- Watkins, Hayes MacArthur, Da Vinci. Damn, this guy's straight up just named Da Vinci. He I'm waiting until mean- you get to it. Did you? I hold on before you scroll down. Yeah, as you scroll down, motherfucker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, did you? Was there anybody in the cast that stood out to you in this movie? Honestly, I didn't know that was Ben Affleck. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you've seen the trailer, go watch it. It's a really good movie. But in you the didn't trailer, know it was Ben Affleck. Yeah, I didn't know that was Ben Affleck, dude. Dude gained like forty pounds for this film. No, that's Ben Affleck, man. That's like non Hollywood Ben Affleck. No, like if if you watch uh, Justice League, he looks that really? size. Yeah. No way. During the I reshoots. Remember, yeah, I remember him in like Gone Girl, and he was like. Yo, Ben Affleck, you know? <laughs> or is that just me? Uh, that might have just been you, man. Well, what other films have Ben Affleck in? Like, uh, uh, obviously, like Daredevil and Daredevil. stuff. Daredevil. Yeah, but that was like 2004. Yeah. When um, was Gone Girl? Like 2016, maybe? Okay, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I've always seen Ben Affleck as like a thicker dude. <laughs> ah, shit. No. Wow. What up? Thickness? No. <laughs> No, but uh, so other than Ben Affleck, nobody from the cast. Uh, ah, damn! I'm trying to cheat. Nah, yeah. um, nah, dude. There was a, the, the okay. The one Hispanic dude looks super familiar, but I couldn't pinpoint it. Damn! It's gonna it's gonna murder you when I tell you. Nah, shut up. Uh, all right, all right. Let me think. Let me think. Is it one of the basketball players? It was one of the basketball players. Ah, uh, I know. Oh, he knows it. Yo, now. uh, don't tell me though. The nah, shut up. Now you're not even trying to tell me? No. <laughs> Just shut up right now. Though. You're that dude at the uh, bar who's like, man, hold me back. Hold, hold me, me back. back. You're lucky they're holding me back. And no one's holding I know, me right? back. Uh, fuck. Um, okay, so the basketball team had the point guard. Okay, it wasn't the point guard. Oh, damn. Man, you really the don't know. The tall guy? Yeah. Okay, so if you haven't seen this movie, you're... You have no idea what's going on. Well, I didn't think it was going to take you. I, I thought you noticed it. No. First of okay, all. what are we talking about? Okay, you know the tall guy, the guy who plays the center? Yeah, the dude that got kicked off the team. Got kicked yeah. off the team. Spoilers. Um, oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't recognize him from anywhere? Let me let me think. Nah. Any uh, Spy Kids. Any random six-second six videos that come to mind? Yo, he's a Vine star? Yeah. 
No, he's not. Bro, he was like one of the top Vine stars. No way. Yeah. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> what? what, what? Which no. Vines? No. Well, <laughs> um, I have no idea. Yeah, uh, his name's uh, Marvin Marvin Gregg, I think, or some something along those lines. He damn did a whole bunch of vines, man. He yeah. had like multiple characters and like all this shit. Are you serious? Yeah, damn. He was up there with like Dope Island and all. He was up there with King Batch. Are you serious? Yeah. Holy crap! No, I didn't recognize him. He has like at least thirty vines with King Batch. I honestly want to look him up. Yeah. He's on the IMDb. Wait, 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 how do you go from a Vine star to the freaking filming a movie with Ben Affleck? Yeah, that was that was uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up because I think th- him being in this movie. Oh, Melvin Gregg. Yeah, Melvin Gregg. Oh, what did I say? I have no idea, but I'm gonna look him up. Um, I think him being in this movie like puts him as like the most successful Vine star at this point because really? like King Batch has been on like Wild and Out, and he's had some small roles in smaller films. Yeah. But like to be in a movie with Ben Affleck, like a you know straight up A list celebrity. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, oh shit, you're right. Yeah, it was like the first thing I noticed, like the first time he walked on the screen. Which his his role in the film was pretty funny. Yeah. Like I did, I I like that they didn't oversaturate his like comedy role. In yeah. The movie. See, there's one with King Batch right there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, oh, the cock block. King All right, Batch. look at you. Yeah, nah. uh, yeah, that's uh, wild. I honestly didn't know that. Damn, yeah. that that's really cool. So yeah, I thought that was really cool that he was in there. But other than other than him, which relatively, I mean, to most of the normal world, is an unknown actor. Ben Ben Affleck kind of carries the whole cast, really. Yeah, no, I agree. I I read a, a quick article that was like, uh, who is uh, Janina Gavankar? Oh yeah, her? yeah. And, like, she's, like, an unknown actress. And even, like, Ben Affleck didn't know who she was when he accepted the role. Damn. Yeah. And, dude, she killed it. Like, yeah, she's his wife. Great. Yeah. Uh, she's actually from uh, Joliet. No way. Are you serious? She went to school at University of Chicago. Damn, dude. Small world. Yo, I read somewhere that um, uh, famous, famous YouTuber. Um, name a famous YouTuber. Super famous white guy. Uh, not David Ninja? Dobrik. Oh, David Dobrik. Yeah. Okay. Do you know who that is? No. Oh, not famous <laughs> enough. Yo, okay. If you're watching this, you know who David Dobrik is? Multi million dollar YouTuber, right? Okay. Is from Chicago. And his uh, his parents were like, yo, you got to do something with your life. You uh-huh. know, like his dad was like, you got to like work hard and stuff. And he was like, well, I don't know what I want to do. So I'm just going to start making videos. And then he just popped off. Huh. Yeah. That's I mean, crazy. I guess I'll look him up. He's not the dude who bought out the whole like store, right? That's a different Oh no, guy. that's that's Mr. Beast, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I watched that video like on <laughs> a complete accident recently. But he's dope. Him and his dumbass friends. And, yeah. yeah. And they just bought the whole fucking store. Yeah. And I was like, bro, what if someone's trying to get their groceries? But then I, I, I think it. he ended up donating it to like uh yeah, food he, shelters. He gave it stuff. to like food shelters and then yeah. like all the animal food he gave it to like animal shelters and stuff. So yeah. like he gave all of it away, but so like, that's that's wild, man. Like going from filming six second videos in your like freaking basement to yeah. like being on a movie with Ben Affleck, that's wild. So if you're interested in the movie rather than the the actors, this movie is pretty much a basketball coach mm-hmm. that um has uh certain like issues with himself, and I don't know how to explain it without giving it away, but he has mental issues that he has to yeah well i guess i wouldn't even classify him as mental, issues. mental issues like he just has like past trauma i guess there you go past trauma that he is trying to deal with at the same time he's trying to coach a high school basketball team mm-hmm. his former high school basketball former team. alma 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 alma, alma, alma matter alma no i'm gonna be well i'm gonna be, I'm gonna be alma. Um, so, yo whatever happens <laughs> hold on time out <laughs> Whatever happened to Black Eyed Peas? They, Are they still a thing? I don't think they're like a thing. But I mean, they kind of just came in like, all right, cool. We kind of won every award we wanted. And then they just they, Yo, they did. There was a moment in time where they were like the summer. like Yeah. Yeah. That was the summer of the peas, they say. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody says that. <laughs> Everyone no. says that. The summer of the peas. That sounds like an R. Kelly movie. <laughs> the summer, summer of the, the peas. Pea. 
trapped with the peas. Oh yeah. my god. No. Um, um yeah, yo, shout out to uh <laughs> Black Eyed Peas. But no, um so this movie, right? Ben Affleck is a basketball coach, and I know. Well, I don't know if we've ever said this on the show, but you and I used to coach a basketball team. Yeah, way back I, I don't in the think day. We ever mentioned on the show? While watching this movie, did you like reminisce on any of the like like coaching that you did? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, there was two scenes in particular that stood out to me. Like one, like the first time that he meets the team, mm-hmm. and he's like dropping facts. Oh and yeah. He's like, it's like how many how many threes did you take? Like how many did you make? And he had, he was shooting like nine percent or something. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's so true because like that's like one of the first things you do. Because I remember like the first practice, like you show up, the whole your whole new team is there. They're just like messing around, shooting around, just and throwing like, up bricks. Yeah. yeah, and like we we would do the same thing that Ben Affleck's character did the first time. He just walked in and was like, no, just just let them play and let me let me feel them out. You yeah, know? let me let me see what they're capable of and like i think we had the same scenario we had like a, a tall dude who was playing who ended up playing center for us yeah and he would just jack up threes all day oh my god yo he thought he was steph curry like it was bad <laughs> and so like that that part and then the other one where they were um they were like running running on the stairs mm-hmm. and like coach how much longer and like he was just like chilling i was like ah <laughs> uh, you're kind of in the third quarter right now you got to keep going yeah and then like at a point they forgot that they were still running so i was like oh okay i guess we're done yeah he's like oh i guess we're in overtime yeah. <laughs> i guess it's overtime now <laughs> yeah yeah I, re- I remember that for sure um there was one character or one basketball player in uh, in the movie that was uh this chubby dude oh, that would chubs. dance chubs yeah, yeah. they call him chubs and uh, I remember one year we had a t- uh, uh, <laughs> we had a player who we nicknamed Nachos. Right. Yeah. And recently we were talking about him yeah, just yeah. like randomly. But this okay, so we had this kid named Nachos, right? The reason well, I mean, he, his, his legal <laughs> name wasn't Nachos. Nacho Sanchez. No. <laughs> uh, the reason we called him Nachos is because we were in the middle of the season. We we're playing against this like really good team, and we were down, right? So we were maybe down like fifteen points or whatever. Mm-hmm. During the we sat him down because he was. I mean, he was all right. He, he was, was all right. Well, we we clearly had five other better players. Yeah. So we yeah. gave we gave him a you know let him ride the bench a little bit. Yeah. Disappears in the middle of the game. Like yo, not even a timeout. Like this dude just straight up runs out and then comes back with a whole plate <laughs> of nachos from the concession stand. And we're like, bro, what are you? <laughs> and he's like just chilling, eating nachos oh on the bench. Oh, my God. Bro, eating nachos, watching his own team play. Like, <laughs> dude, how did you? What <laughs> made you go get nachos? Like, And we're like, I think, I think we put him back in like mid nachos, too. <laughs> Yo, that was before coronavirus. Yeah. This dude's licking his fingers, <laughs> licking his fingers, touching the ball. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that like little little stuff like that. Like yeah, when they sure. mentioned that this guy's nickname was Chubbs, I was like, oh. And like when he was describing the players, was like oh, like that's like our our best player. That's yeah. like a really good shooter. This guy is really good defensively, and like because that's how you like think of them at first, you know? Like, oh even, yeah, even sure. before you learn their names, you're like figuring out where everybody fits yeah like i remember we had a little uh shy guy with glasses yeah didn't say one word the whole season but like towards the end he kind of loosened up yeah, a bit he kind of yeah, started high-fiving people and stuff right yeah. Yeah, it was great you get and to his see mom was like oh how's he doing and he's like oh your son doesn't talk well he <laughs> doesn't talk it was like but how's he playing well he doesn't talk he doesn't talk uh, so we don't give him the ball no <laughs> i was like all right if you want <laughs> if you guys want to go in and uh just shout really loud and he's just there all no, right, guess okay. he doesn't want yeah, to play. Guess- <laughs> Gave him a fair shot. If you want to stop running, yell really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. Uh, but I guess generally the, the film, I, I felt like there wasn't, the film by itself isn't good, but I think that uh, uh, Ben Affleck's portrayal in the movie kind of carries the whole thing. Oh, man. You know, it's yeah, I thought the exact same thing after the movie. Yeah, because like at the end of the day, it's like your standard sports film. Like, Mm-hmm. Uh, your reluctant person comes out of nowhere, helps the team become good. Uh, something happens. There's some conflict. There's a slow mo. The yeah. clock's running down. Yeah, and yeah. it's like your general. Like if you've seen one sports film, you kind of seen them all. Honestly, yeah. But like uh, Ben Affleck's acting kept me engaged the whole time. So like there was no point in the movie where I was like, I like bored or like, all right, come on, but, hurry up. Yeah, yeah. Because like I kind of. Figure like, oh, this is gonna happen, and this is gonna happen. Something bad's gonna happen, and then it's gonna end up good at the end. I was honestly waiting for s- them to lose like a major game. Yeah, like yeah, that would be yeah, and that's and they did at one point, but without giving anything away, like 
I, I I wish it was more drastic. Yeah. You know? Because, like, you know how in, like, Mighty Ducks or whatever, it's like, like, we got to lose to win or whatever. And, it, it, like, with any sports film, just like you said, like, there's always that, like, comeback. Right. You there's got to be a, They like, didn't a really have a comeback. Um. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's hard to, like, talk around the milk. I know. Yo, I, so, I feel like we're just going to have to spoil this shit for everybody now. I guess la- like, spoil last. Spoil milk. <laughs> Last thing then before we get into spoilers because that'll make right this away. so much easier to <laughs> it'll make Yo, it so much easier to like, talk to. Usually, yeah, if you've seen our other movie reviews, we give you like a solid thirty minutes of just like but non-spoiler it, shit. Yeah, this movie is isn't meaty enough to give you non-spoiler shit, so we got right. we got to dive. You in can't this. really talk about it without actually talking yeah. about the plot points. But uh, one thing that I thought that the movie did well, and I could, I think I could talk around plot points with this one. Is that they didn't like? They didn't assume that the audience was dumb, you know? Because like a lot of movies, they'll like straight up tell you like this happened, then this happened, then this happened, mm-hmm. and that's how we got here. And this movie just kind of drops you in, and like it makes you think. Like even with the opening sequence, it makes you think one thing, but like he's what drinking was coffee, the opening but sequence? he's actually drinking something else. Yes, and yeah. like uh, you don't really know why. Why you you see him the way that he is first, and then you kind of slowly get the backstory of it. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. never like in your face. Like this is what happened, or yeah. like it never has like a big flashback moment where it shows you it. You kind of have to put it together. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. So like that's one thing that even though the the movie like the general template of it is pretty predictable, I like the way that they told the story. Yeah, it was kind of split in between, really. Yeah, the whole like. This the sports story is predictable, but his personal story is so right, and that's yeah. what kept me engaged. Like, damn, that's dope. Because every every time that you thought you like figured out who he was, there was like another layer to his character. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're like, damn, this motherfucker's spitting, and right? Then, like, he's not really spitting; he's just trying to survive. Right, he's like, just trying to survive. But then yeah. at the end, you're like, oh, he's really spitting. Oh, this motherfucker's you know? spitting for sure. Nah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which, but, oh man, and that's another thing. There was there was a moment in the movie. Uh, we'll dive into i was like yo i've done that before uh-huh and it, it made me feel like damn what an asshole like like it resonated I felt, with yeah you? i felt like shitty because i was damn. like dude if especially okay so the theater we went to there, there was a lot of loud people and yeah. everyone i mean this one dude started clapping in the middle of the movie <laughs> like this motherfucker <laughs> like was a randomest yeah, yeah he was cheering like he was at a bulls game but uh it, it gave you like their true um judgment of the character in the film yeah, right yeah, so not necessarily the acting but they were really engaged in what the character was going through so there was one scene um that we'll talk about in a little bit where you know everyone's reaction to what was going on, on the screen was like damn bro like you fucking up man you know yeah. and then in my head i was like holy shit like i've i've, I've done that before like, oh okay you know what so i'm saying like so everyone really... was like reacting a certain way and you're like oh fuck <laughs> yeah so i was like fuck dude that shit's crazy yeah, and it's like would have reacted to me it's yeah. a yeah it's like a weird connection that you have with the character yeah that you don't really have in sports movies because the coach is obviously always like the good guy you right. know like coach carter fucking coach is a good guy like whatever the rookie the any any sports film the coach is right. always it's like usually the not guy. the coach or if it is the coach that's the problem usually by the end of the movie he's gone and there's a new coach yeah, yeah right so with this one it was like no like he's trying to be a good guy but he has so many like dark like demons following him right that he just can't help but fuck up you know right so that's why i loved about it but yo let's get into these spoilers because Woo, all right this is gonna be a good ass conversation no, um we'll finally talk about it no. yeah so if you don't want to spoil the movie for yourself stop watching come back to it do what you gotta do follow us on instagram trailer without a radio if you do want to sit through this and you don't care because you're gonna watch it regardless yeah you know, this is about to be dope so yeah um yeah let's get into it man he drinks a lot now this is my, no bro like this guy oh my God. drinks so much and okay so when i was saying ben affleck looked like he gained weight yeah that was the perfect like figure for someone for that's, someone who drinks that much yeah so i wouldn't would you say he's an alcoholic uh at that point i, I yeah you'd have to classify that would you dude, dude down a 30 rack in one night by himself 
Okay, yeah. So in the movie, in the movie, right? It starts off with him drinking. Yeah. And just like you said, we don't know what he's drinking. We right. Because at this point, he's he's at work. He's like a construction worker or yeah. something, and he's drinking out of a, a coffee thermal. Yeah. So I assumed he was drinking coffee. It's like early in the morning. Yeah. And then it cuts to like him drinking at a bar after work. Right. Which I mean, we've all done it. Like just go yeah. out for a beer. And then it just keeps cutting to him drinking more. Yeah, it's just him drinking. And then it, it's painting the picture of, yo, this guy doesn't stop drinking ever. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, like, he had, you know, he was taking a shower. He had a beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, when he left work, if you remember, he reached back and brought out a beer from a cooler. And put it in a styrofoam cup. Yeah. He yeah. drank on the way back. He, like, went to the bar and drank. Yeah. So this man is is obviously drinking and, but we don't know what the reason he's you know, right. We don't know what the backstory is. So that, that I did like that about the film because they didn't start with like your typical, oh, uh, high school kids like lost the uh, last season. This season they're gonna yeah. start fresh. No, like it starts with some deep like real shit. Yeah, know? like it it even because the the whole opening sequence is like a montage of him at work. Yeah. And it was just like looked like any other normal dude, you know. He was like yeah. drinking his coffee, or any other like stereotypical construction worker drinking his coffee. He's got his like big sunglasses on. He's smoking a cigarette while drinking his coffee, mm-hmm. like on break and all that. So it was just like a normal like you could have gone down like down the expressway and just filmed <laughs> the dude, and it probably would have looked the same. Right. You probably would get your ass kicked, but you would have filmed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then, yeah, and then at that point, you're like, oh, shit, this is a basketball movie. Like, you forget. Yeah. That. Yeah. And there was a, I guess, going to how the way that the plot, like, got thickened. Yeah, thickened. I'll that was go weird. with that. Thickened. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever done this motion with your hand? <laughs> yeah. Like, thickened. What, what do you do with this? Like, what? <laughs> like, at what point in your life are you going to do this? When you're picking up your phone. No, but this is weird. Anyways. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so there, there was a scene in the movie because the movie takes place like sometime before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. it starts, and so he's at the at the convenience store or the liquor store. It's one or the other, and he's buying like a big box of alcohol. Yeah, and he's going to the Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, because yeah. he's going to Thanksgiving dinner. But at this point in the movie, we had just seen him drink, like go to work and then drink. <laughs> yeah. So I, I seriously thought that he was gonna. He was just saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going over to my sister's. And he was just going to take that whole box home and drink, you know? Yeah, that's what I thought, too. But then he actually went to his sister's. And in that scene, it, like, paints a completely different completely different picture of him. Like, yeah. everyone's, like, happy to see him. They're, like, asking about him. Like, the two, his, uh, his niece and nephew are, like, really excited. They obviously have, they, they like him. They have a good time with him. So he's like a family man. Yeah. Like, yeah and he's so like at, a normal dude. At this point, I'm like, oh, cool. And then, like, one of the next scenes, he's, like, he ends up having a conversation with his sister that was going pretty, like, normal. Mm-hmm. And then all of, the, out of a sudden, he just snaps and, like, smashes his beer against the wall. Yeah. And I think that was just a defensive, like, because I think the sister mentioned, like, yo, are, is everything okay with you? Yeah. Like, some, like my friend told me that she sees your car at the bar every night. Mm-hmm. So he just snaps and he's like, oh, yeah, what do you he, mean? Like, calls like, her fat. Your friend's <laughs> a fat ass bitch. Like, yeah. Well, not those words, but close. Yeah, essentially that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, like you said, it was like a defense mechanism. But at this point in the movie, we didn't know for what or why. Or right. We, we didn't know anything. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But uh, another good example of how the plot doesn't. It doesn't like hold your hand or like just show you stuff. It lets you infer it. Is when they start talking about his past and how he was like really good. He was like a uh, player of the of the year like two times when he was in high school. Which that's that's crazy. I I, I actually wanted to talk about that. Um, okay. So, what are the chances of him staying in that town and then coaching his old high school you know team? I feel like it I has feel, to happen. No, but like. Okay, so like if you went to back to high school, right, and right. you were the track coach, okay, and you had a drinking problem, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> what are the chances of him like being the last winning team and then going back to you know like I felt like that was too like too storybook. Oh, uh, okay, know? I get you. Yeah, like I, mean, I don't know, like I I wanted a more realistic like setting mm-hmm. where like even with Coach Carter, like 
the reason he was coaching that team is because his son wanted to play on that team, right? Uh-huh. Which even then, it's still kind of whack. I mean, I, I could I could see how it could happen. Like even like a lot of, a lot of friends we know, like they're teachers now, and they at the, teach at Morton. Mm-hmm. They they teach at the same school at the same high school where they went. Yeah. So like it's not too far fetched, but I, I guess at that point I already just bought into like okay he was a really good basketball player when he was in high school and then i just mm-hmm. kind of didn't question the other part of it but we don't know why he didn't pursue basketball right yeah but like i like how they never really mentioned how they just said like all the characters was like oh he was really good they never mentioned how good he was like you found out how good he was from everything around like you found like when he's walking in the gym you see that he was like player of the of the year like two years in a row mm-hmm they won like four championships when he was there. He was like the regional champions. It's like the early nineties. Yeah. yeah. And like at various points, like when they're when he's at the bar or like when random people are talking, uh, they mention like, Oh, you know, I was there when he dropped fifty one against blah blah blah. Ooh. Or I was there when he yeah. when he scored forty forty seven points. And so, like, nobody ever, uh, and this isn't, like, him talking, you know? This is just yeah, noise in the background. Other, other people telling his story. So, I never, do. they never really tell you anything. There's no flashbacks or anything. You just, like, kind of piece it together. Like, oh, he was really good. Yeah. And then, like, the most direct that they ever got with it was when they uh, mentioned that he had a full ride to uh, Kentucky. And he turned yeah. it down. But, I, I, so, like, little stuff like that. I like how we learn the plot. Not through dialogue. Also, I like that he was wearing Jordans. The, did you notice that? This motherfucker is wearing the, the 12s, the yeah. orange and uh, gray ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Like little shit like that. And you could tell that he has a, a like a resistance with basketball. Like he doesn't want to just take the job as a coach because right. he was like, nah, like I'm, you know, I'm straight and it's not for me. I'm too, and then the school is per- very persistent. Like, oh, you know, we'll see you on Monday. Like, no, well, motherfucker. That, that was that, oh, that sequence. Scene. Oh, that was such a good scene. When he... Oh my god! I didn't like. I didn't think he was gonna finish all those beers. It was like legit, <laughs> like a thirty rack in yeah. his fridge, and this was like right after he just got in the job offer. He drove home and he put fucking college pro fact, college pro <laughs> move right here. Go ahead. He, let him know. Let him know. That. He would open up his fridge, grab a beer, put it in the freezer. And then drink, he, I guess with the first beer, he just drank it out the fridge, I guess. Yeah. And so every time he got a new beer, he would take a new one out the fridge, put it in the freezer, take the one from the freezer and drink that one. And so, <laughs> and he would tap it a couple times. Oh, so with the fu- the foam yeah. and the, bro, this this man was a straight up. <laughs> he was a like, pro. He's a pro. And even in the, during that scene, I kind of like nudged you and I was yeah. like, this guy, moved the 30 rack, like that's it? Like, no, he <laughs> yeah. finished them he in finished one it. sitting. That's and, crazy. And for those of you that don't really drink a 30 rack, meaning 30 beers. 30 beers. 30 yeah. beers on one uh, fridge rack. And he just sat there and drank it. But I like hearing his voicemails, how he was like, oh, you know, I don't think I could just squeeze it in. Like, I got a lot going on in my in my life right now. And by yeah. the end of it, when he's like 27 beers in, he's like, fuck your team. Yeah, fuck <laughs> your team. I ain't coaching shit. <laughs> and then... And then he just ends up taking the job. And then he the shows up, ta- yeah. yeah, and ends up taking the job. <laughs> what I want to know is how was he not, well, he, oh, actually, I'm lying. He was hung over in one scene, mm-hmm. but, like, the amount of drinking that you do, you just never hung over. Like, this man's liver was soon to die. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, I mean, that's, that's what I figured. I was like, oh, he's probably just perpetually drunk. Because, yeah. you know, the morning after he woke up from drinking the 30 rag, he somehow had more beer. Yeah, <laughs> first of yeah. all, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> he like had a shower beer. He like poured out another like uh, like uh, what's it called vodka, uh, vodka. into his yeah. like uh, thermal cup. Yeah, have you ever had a shower beer? Uh, yeah, not not the way he has though. Oh, this this man's shower beer. He has a rack in his shower just for the beer. Mm-hmm. Like it was usually put your shampoo there. No, this guy had a beer. That's for the beer. The shampoo's Actually, out in the corner. I read a. a Instagram posts once that was like uh, the the types of beers, right? So there uh-huh. was like the the shower beer, the uh, oh, fuck, what was it called? The vacation beer. Okay. The the beer that you drink while your wife's getting ready. <laughs> the freaking the balcony porch beer. Okay. Um, so like just different yeah, just areas different. where you can have and, a beer. Yeah, and they hit different, you know. Okay. Which like- one's your favorite like beer? Not like a Budweiser and shit, but like, uh, what's your favorite like moment beer? Yeah. 
Ooh, because have you had a United Center beer? A United, those hit ooh, different. Those are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Friday beers. Ooh, shout out to the Friday <laughs> beers. The... Yo, go follow Friday. <laughs> yeah, this Friday is beers on, Instagram. on Instagram called Friday Beers. Uh, our buddy and friend of the show, guest of the show, uh, Eric Delgado. Yeah. He, he told me about it. I was a little resistant at first, and then I finally followed them changes your life it really does and i, I haven't drank in such a long time and i was like yo this is amazing like it just it yeah. makes your day like it makes you look forward to friday just to see what kind of stuff they're posting bro it was great it was great i think this this last oh today yeah. i saw a really good one today today's yeah. were really good yeah. uh so yeah i'm gonna go with the friday beers but Damn. I'll, I'll i'll make that a little bit more general just like the beer that you have like at the end of a like a week a long week or mm-hmm. something and like you know, you're like all right, I don't have to do anything tomorrow. I'm just gonna cut loose, have a Dang. good time, you know. Yep, yep, I agree. It's like I That's guess you could call that like the salvation beer. Yeah, the finish line beer. Yeah. What What about What about for you? Man, I don't know. I wasn't ready for this. Now nah, was my question. <laughs> the stupid, uh, stupid. Um, damn. The the summer barbecue now that's too that's too lame no the summer that, barbecue that's a good beer one. yeah summer but like you like the first fresh, summer barbecue? fresh out of the cooler you know yeah so like it's still got like yeah. the, the moisture on it you crack it open mm-hmm. and then the grill's going yeah see yeah. there you go that's a good beer yeah i guess you're just so disappointed nah, I, know. I wish i was it was like cooler like uh like ooh the the concert like uh parking lot beer okay yeah, I just made that up. See, I feel like the the summer cookout beer was better than that. Yeah, that was. No, no, no I'm thinking of another one. All right, well, you you take your time with that. Uh, <laughs> nah, shower beers. Yeah, that, that one's pretty legit too. So you just just go with the shower beer. Yeah. Ooh, so, the Tennessee beer. <laughs> All right. So Focus, I guess to, nah. to get a little bit more into the plot, then, uh, eventually we f- we come to find out that he was actually married before. Yeah. Because early early on in the film, I guess when he's first getting interviewed for the job, or they're telling him if he wants the job, mm-hmm. he's like, "Oh, you know, like I'm not married, I don't have kids, like you know, none of that." And you believe him? Yeah. So I what just assume liar. that he's like, you know, on his own. Mm-hmm. And then you eventually learn, like, oh, he did have a wife. He's divorced. Yeah. That's why he doesn't have a wife. And then much later in the film, you find that they actually had a child too, which is crazy. Like. Yeah, and and that that was another part where like they did such a good job at not like explicitly like at no point do they really say that he had cancer. They just no, uh, geez, just drop that in there. Jesus. Oh well, no. I mean we've been spoiling stuff for the last oh, twelve yeah, minutes. Yeah, yo, his son had cancer, and it's crazy because they disclose that towards the end of the movie, but it ties in with everything that you were wondering during the whole movie. Right. So like the wife thing, he has um. He has a thing where like he hears a voicemail and like it's the wife and yeah. she wants to meet up, but then you don't know that that's the wife and then it kind of you think it's th- just some random yeah. yeah. But then they start acting awkward together and then like he gets mad at her, but then it's like okay so maybe that's why he's drinking so much right because right, a failed marriage yeah. But then it evolves from that to okay so our 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 friends are having a birthday party for their son and we're invited do we go together mm-hmm. and even then you're like okay that's weird but you know yeah at that yeah. point i was like that's a lot of effort for this birthday party like they don't yeah. even and which i was just thinking that they were hiding the divorce yeah you know I which thought, is kind of normal i thought that and then i was like that's kind of weird like it's a birthday party for their friend's kid they don't have any kids it's kind of yeah so they, i just figured they were like friends from like from college or something right and then they just wanted to pretend like they're together yeah but man and then you get hit with uh the, the way they, they announced it was like the f- this the friend's son yeah was like oh this is uh michael's dad yeah. and then he's like who's that and he's like remember you were playing with him at the hospital yeah like you and guys then, just, you dressed you up for uh yeah. halloween pushed you on the on the wheelchairs yeah, yeah so then you don't know that his friend has cancer too his right. friend's son but you know that the son was in the hospital in and the obviously hospital he's not there and now anymore. Now he's gone. Yeah. Which is so crazy. I wonder why the director was like, all right, let's leave that information out, yeah. but we'll, we'll like announce it with this scene. Right. Which just hit perfectly. Yeah. And that's just why, like, even though the plot was predictable, I feel like it was the plot came at you in a good way. Because they yeah. could have just, at the beginning of the movie, like, yeah, my son died of cancer. 
Oh, that's why he's drunk all the time, and that's right. Why his like life it would have just shitty. ruined a whole lot of the yeah. mystery and like really taken you out of the film. Yeah, but yeah. So like there was the that revelation. Um, that's enough good things. No, <laughs> <laughs> damn. Uh, the main issues that I had with it is that aside from the plot being kind of predictable, like I was like, oh, he doesn't want the job. He, you know, he's gonna take the job. They're gonna lose, and they're gonna get better. They're gonna start winning. Yeah, and then you kind of alluded to it earlier when you're like, "Oh, they had that one game where they they ended up losing, and it was a an important game, right? It mm-hmm. would have gotten them into the playoffs." And when that happened, I was like, "Oh," because I was I was already waiting. I was waiting like, "Okay, what's the thing that fucks up? Like, is he gonna relapse and yeah. start drinking again? Are they gonna like fire? Like, what's gonna happen?" And then they lost the game, and I was like, "Oh, that's it." Like, yeah, that it seemed like nothing. Yeah, but then yeah. that wasn't even it. That was just kind of like to throw you off. Yeah. For sure, because he he does end up like uh, relapsing, but does. it's it's tied in so well because the remember the friends, uh, his friend's son mm-hmm. who was in remission during his birthday, all of a sudden has you know he's in the hospital again. They tell him that he has cancer, and like then that's that's and he just snaps. I think that's the first moment in the film when like everything just comes together and you're like. It just clicked. It like clicked for me. Like this is why. Yeah. This is why he's so defensive and like doesn't want to talk about his feelings or anything. And yeah, why, he's always was, drinking. That shit was crazy. Um, and again, like it's such a real reason to drink all the time. Yeah. Like imagine losing a son to cancer, then losing your wife shortly after. Right. And then the whole thing that he explained about his dad. Yeah. Never really liking him. Right. So that's just like all right. If you grow up, your dad not liking you, and the only reason he's talking to you is because you're the best basketball player in town. Right. Right? And then you end up not pursuing basketball just to get back at your dad. Right. You know? there Right off the bat, your life is already going to shit. But then your wife snaps you out of that, like, mm. slump. You have a kid. Now, everything that you didn't do with your dad, you want to do with your son, right. he ends up dying. Bro, like, this guy is just... That's it. Like yeah. I would have gone crazy. Like that's such a not and not to sound fucked up, but that's such a perfect like mixture of f- fucking up. You know, like <laughs> yeah, that that was like perfectly crafted for him to have a drinking problem. Right. Like all of a sudden, you're like, oh, like you use like validated and you know yeah. everything that you'd see him fuck up with at till that point in the movie. You're like, oh, that makes sense now. It's like, like well, yeah, I would you, go to you, the like, bar too. Like, you feel yeah. for him at that point. Mm-hmm. Um. So, like, it, yeah, it's just the way that they brought everything together was really good. Um, Speaking of the bar real quick before we continue. So, there, there's this reoccurring bar scene where he goes to this bar and gets yep. drunk, right? Did you notice? So, the black guy that would, like, carry him out every night yep. and carry him back to his, his house. Did you notice what he said to him during oh, one of the scenes? Yeah, he was like, I used to carry your dad up yeah. as well. He's like, oh, thank you so much. He's like, you know, and then he's like, oh, don't worry about it. I used to carry your dad up, too. So, that that guy was his dad's friend and yeah. imagine how that guy feels seeing his friend's son fucking throwing his life away too right and that's crazy and they didn't really dive into that guy's character mm-hmm. but to me that was an important role because he is firsthand like watching this guy throw his life away but he yeah. can't do anything about it and i thought that to me even like outlined who ben affleck's character's dad was even more because mm-hmm. then you know that his dad was at the bar, this bar getting super drunk. So, like, you know, even when he was home, he probably wasn't, like, really active mm-hmm. in, like, the family aspect of it or anything. Right. And so, it yeah, it probably sucked for this guy because, like, damn, like, he ended up just like his dad, you know? Yeah. And, um... But really, though, that, that, that guy was more of a guardian angel than anything. Yeah. yeah if you think about it. Because there, there no was... one would have carried Ben Affleck up those stairs every night. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And not even, like, ask him to, like, stop. Like, not once did he tell him, hey, stop drinking. Right. Well, because yeah. th- there was even scenes where he went to get him. Like, he was, like, taking shots with, like, his friend's friends or no. whatever well, assholes no. you know he was taking shots with them I was like all right it's time for this guy to go home you know you everyone's like, like oh come on we're reminiscing yeah that's when they were talking about how he dropped like 47 like 41 like this dude was a monster do you think he was just drinking with them because they knew that ben affleck was gonna pay the tab at the end of the night <laughs> jerks no <laughs> i'm all painting a picture i know <laughs> um, well it's true like in a small town like that 
I don't know if you've seen the video that was like uh, going viral on Facebook where it was like uh, uh, the dudes you find in your local bar. And it's yeah. like, yo, Frank, like, hey, uh, is uh, Joey coming by later? Like, oh, man, how are the Colts doing or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like the, those uh, like small that, town like dudes. Like stereotypical, yeah. like small. Yeah, they just like hang out at the at the bar every mm-hmm. night. But one thing that that reminded me, your point, with the, the older black dude who would help him up the stairs I feel like there was a lot of stuff that the movie just kind of half-assed or, like, gave up on. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, <laughs> most of the team, really, like, the players on the team, they kind of, like... Horrible. They... <laughs> <laughs> they would, like, introduce them and, like, talk about them for, like, two seconds, and then they never really did anything. Yeah. So, like, you remember the first time when they were introducing them and they were talking about the guy who used to be captain? Uh, I didn't even... I don't even remember his name. But, oh yeah, ex captain. Yeah, the like the fourth year senior who was the captain. Like, yeah. uh, he was like not much of a offense, but he's really good on defense. Yeah, like they talked about him and they kind of like hyped him up a little bit, and then they basically never even talked about him for the rest no. of the film. And even like the characters that they did focus on, so like the point guard, like they kind of made this story like maybe he was gonna have like some kind of bond with ben affleck's character and he was gonna like help him out where his dad wasn't helping him or something that's what i was hoping for yeah. and then they just kind of push him off to the side and nothing happens yeah and then the same thing with uh with our viner buddy here that's where, like, crazy his character i thought it was gonna be like this big like redemption story man i was so disappointed in that yeah and they kind of yeah. did do it a little bit but they they like half-assed it you know they could have gotten so many raids so in the in the in the movie uh they kicked this guy off the team right right and then this is like it's, all right it's like a, a private catholic school you know yeah. he, he he's not like a game banger or anything right but the, when they kick him off the team he comes back to ask the coach for forgiveness and he wants to be on the team right I was expecting, and like like I said before, I was comparing it so much to Coach Carter, which I shouldn't have. Uh-huh. But I was expecting him to like be in the streets and then hear about the team starting to win more, yeah. and like going to the game and watching them in the bleachers, like you know, just getting into bad like after school like activities, right? Like slaying in rocks or something, you know, <laughs> slaying like rocks, becoming a crazy drug lord. But no, like he was just like, yo, just, I want to be on the team again. Like yeah. they should have made him earn it more. Well, there was. I guess you you could argue that they did a little bit because he, he they brought him back, but he was like on the bench nah, for like the next few that. games. But uh, I did like how he, he you know clearly this kid he likes being on the team like this is his his life as he said. Yeah. <laughs> but I like how he was like too embarrassed the first time. He was like, oh, you know, my mom doesn't want me, uh, you know, hanging around without nothing to do after school, yeah. and like she she wants you to put me back on the like he was like trying to use this excuse, you know. Yeah. And uh, he gets he gets shut down, and so he like it's like ten fifteen seconds of actual screen time of like his face like going through emotions, <laughs> and he like just swallows his pride and like almost almost starts crying. He, I think like, he was tearing up. Yeah, he's like, coach, like, all right, I lied. My mom didn't say that. Like, I want to be on the team. Like, this is what I want. You yeah, know? he's. I- that scene in particular where he's like, oh, I just want to fucking play basketball. Or like yeah. he says some, he swears. And then the coach is like, uh, yo, no no swearing, man. It's school policy. <laughs> it's cool, school's code of conduct. Yeah, code of conduct. Yeah, don't swear. But this man swears up oh, a storm. Oh, my God. Dude, that shit was so funny. Like, okay, so he, obviously the school is a Catholic school. And, dude, there's like this assistant to assistant coach. I don't know. He's like the um, ball boy. Yeah. You, I forgot what the word they used, but he he was like a school representative. Okay, like typically with like high school sports, you have to have like a school person with you. Yeah, just to like make sure you're not you're not drinking with the kids. Yeah, or yeah. something like that. So it, it's like a normal thing that they have at other schools. I just can't remember what it's called. So then he was trying to tell him like, "Yo, you know, you gotta stop swearing. Like, yeah. you know, per <laughs> school guidelines, you <laughs> can't be. Like, can you be a little bit? Try to be a little bit more Christ-like. Yeah." And he's like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Dude, he's so stupid. Um, but I love, like, every time he would get crazy and, like, he starts swearing, you, yeah. the camera would just pan over to the chubby dude. <laughs> to the guy and his face is like, oh, my God. I, yeah. Like, I already talked to this man. So there was, a, there was a lot of moments like that where it's like, all right, this movie's funny. This movie's good. It's, like, wholehearted, like, a uh, sports Yeah, Yeah, it was, it was really, yeah. I liked that it was it was funny in, like, a very natural way. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like people were going out of their way to be funny or like stupid shit was happening. It, it was like finding funny moments in that. There was one player that I wanted to talk about. 
he was really a player. This man was wow. talking to different girls after school. Yeah. Like, so it cuts to like three or four different girls, and he's spitting the same like a pickup line or whatever. Yeah. And then and he would always get caught by the coach. Well, then, and it cuts to like a practice scene where this guy is like running suicides. Yeah. And, he's and it's like, just him. Yeah, too. it's just him, yeah. and the whole team's watching. And then he asks the coach, like, oh, coach, how many more? You know, I need to stop. And then he's like, oh, it's not up to me, it's up to them. And then and it's, it's all the, the three girls yeah. that he was hitting on. <laughs> Dude, that shit was so funny. He's like, "Come on, you know I got love for each and one. Of, each <laughs> I got, and every I one got of Ruben. You. I got little compartments <laughs> in my heart for each of you, <laughs> bro. That shit was so funny, man. But like, even that, like, it's just like a such a normal thing that you could see happening, like at a high school somewhere. You oh know? yeah, because there's sure. always like people on the team who were like hitting on all the cheerleaders, and these girls were cheerleaders. Yeah, and then you know, eventually it backfires on them or something, and that that's something I could see like. At any any team at Morton doing, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. If you think about it, high school sports are kind of like the beginning of like a brotherhood for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you spend a lot of time with, with whatever teammates, mm-hmm. I guess, you have. And then ideally, that's like for four years. Yeah. But uh, going back to the, to the games, I just like... Uh, tv shows or movies that are based around sports because they make the <laughs> like, sport look so cool you know bro it's all the angles and like the shots like they envision like the dude hitting the three it's always a corner three point made well that's you how you know that? the corner three pointer is a very high percentage shot they always swing it to the corner like that's so do something else like <laughs> and then they always get like that like layup you know and it's yeah. like the shot you know what's what the camera angle i hate when they sh- shoot him no they record him shooting yeah but then they cut to the basket and it's oh, always a swish but yep. it's like no he didn't fucking shoot that like <laughs> i know you guys are lying like, i hate that bro so i think uh that happened to line coach carter and with this one it happened like once or twice yeah but i was like man come on like can't we just get like a 2k angle and like watch them play like, yeah yeah so uh this reminds me of um Ah, shit, I guess to to skip skip ahead. <laughs> what is this DVR? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it just fast forward. The... Well, no, we're already in spoiler territory, so it doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, we're if, way if you made it this far. Sp- either yeah. you don't care about the plot of the movie, or you're fine with us talking about it, or you've already seen at this the point movie. we're just talking shit about the movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you you mentioned like you know one angle of him shooting, and then another angle of the, just the basket, and he goes in perfectly. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the movie when you know he made this Ben Affleck's character made this huge breakthrough like he went to therapy like he hit rock bottom and then he like got help he went to uh, therapy he went to like uh, like a rehab center he did like all these steps and um, the movie ends with him picking up a basketball and like going to go shoot around which you know he mentioned earlier in the film that he hadn't picked up a basketball ever since (laughs) Ever since he, <laughs> you know where I'm going now. Ever since his dad, like, yeah. Uh, ever since he realized that his dad only liked him because he could potentially become like, he could be rich off playing basketball. Yeah, he just dropped basketball completely. Yeah. So at, there, at the end of the film, they didn't cut. They show you everything. Yeah, they really do. And, and I like how he missed his second shot, and immediately I saw you like, that's it. <laughs> like, I just saw your immediate reaction, like all this hype Bro. about best high school player. Yeah, because okay, so the camera angle was like panning out, right? So it's like you see everything. He makes the first one, and I don't know why, but I was, it was like, like a clean three too. I was like, oh, all right, cool. Like Ben Affleck, you can shoot, and then he misses the second one. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> How are you gonna be this badass basketball but, player? But he didn't miss ever again after that. Uh, at that point, I didn't. You just yeah. tuned out. You're like, all right, it's over. Uh, yeah, I'm out. Bro, that was funny. Like, I don't know. That was my initial reaction. Just like, bro, like, how you gonna miss? <laughs> I um, just, I, I saw your arm go up so fast when that miss happened. Bro, let's talk about his, his, his rock bottom though, because that's a very important part of the movie where I was like, holy shit, this, yeah. like this man is gonna die. Um, there was we we've done a movie review for uh, mid '90s, right? Yeah. In the in the 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 climax of that movie was. When the kids are driving and then the driver is drunk, mm-hmm. but they all get in the car and they end up crashing, right? Right. So with that film, when I was watching it, that was like an immediate shock. And I was like, holy shit, I did not expect that, right? Because right. 
in the movie they shot it so well where like you feel like you're in the car with them and then you get into a collision and you just you know that that's the that's how they did it but in this film there was a scene where he's drunk driving home right and you could feel like yo he's gonna crash like, like something's gonna happen yeah so he he picks up this chick at the bar and like he's drunk driving and like he's trying to kiss her all while driving and it's like all right something's gonna happen someone's gonna die right um he crashes into a boat <laughs> this man crashes into a boat yo and in the and, heat of the moment yeah. the 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 chick is like yo that's my neighbor's boat right like go park in the back and meet me inside right mind you this man is pissed drunk right he's ne- probably never been in that neighborhood before right he stumbles into this house <laughs> And I thought it was the funniest thing because I, I, for a second, I was like, all right, cool. He made it inside. Like, right. He saved, you know, yeah. he could see another day. And then he's taking a piss and the owner of the house is like, <laughs> yo, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing in my house? And he has a bat. What would you do in that situation? Drunk as fuck, right? Yeah. Um, like, you could be at a bar. You could be, like, at a college party. Drunk as fuck. You're taking a piss. And it's <laughs> door not. Door open, by yeah, the way. Yeah, door open. <laughs> And it's not where you and thought you were. And you're already drinking this dude's beer. Oh, yeah. This guy went into the fridge like it was his own house. Yeah, cracked, cracked the, beer. the beer. So what would you do? I that, Like, that's so weird. Like, I don't, I don't think I would have done anything different from what the character in the film did. Yeah, I agree. Because, like, Ben Affleck's character, he... Like once one because he's super drunk, right? But like once it all clicks and he's like, "Oh, I'm in the wrong house." He's just like, "Hey, I'm in the wrong house. <laughs> I'm just gonna get out of here." Yeah, you know, like I nine times out of ten, I probably would have done the same thing or yeah. would have said something along those lines. Yeah, and um, this guy was just an asshole, <laughs> and he's like, "No, you're gonna stay here until the cops come." Right? He's like, "No, my wife's calling the cops." Like yeah. he's just like a. a thug dude yeah that's see that that's what happens when uh that's bogus no oh uh, that's fucked up that's what happens when your wife is taller than you what you... the wife calls the cops no because like i i noticed that right away when this wife was standing in the background uh-huh he's like oh he's trying to like show how dominant he is against the six four fucking ben affleck ben affleck right you know yeah and he has a bat in his hand yeah he has a bat yeah. and he's like a, he's like a shorter dude he's like kind of pudgy and like Ben Affleck's character, like even with all the beer that he's been drinking and stuff, he's still like six four, and he's like he looks like he's a pretty strong dude, you know. Yeah. And so like, there's a point in the film when like they start tussling, and Ben Affleck just like eventually he's like, "All right, I'm done messing with you," and he just pushes him, and the dude just goes flying. Bro, Ben Affleck, when I tell you that was the most bad luck you could ever have, yeah. this dude flies through the door, yep. goes outside, goes over the railing. This man uh, apparently lives on a hill because he, <laughs> he rolls downhill. <laughs> he rolls downhill, hits his head, God knows how many times, yeah. ends up on the curb and knocked out. That was literally rock bottom. Yeah, and then that was yeah, yeah long winded way to say that was his rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, um, but damn, dude, that shit's so crazy. I think if uh, if I was home and I see a drunk dude walk in, grab beer. I'll be right. one that he's grabbing my beer. I'll be pissed that he's grabbing my beer. <laughs> for one, for two, I don't know. Like at that point, like, do you shoot him? Do you like? Is that like? Yeah. What do you, what do, you do? Like that shit's crazy. Uh, no, I thought your option was like to shoot him. I know, right? Uh, do you shoot him? No. But one thing that I do want to say, this is kind of on that guy too, for leaving his door yeah, open. Yeah, who leaves their fucking yeah. back door open in the middle of the night in it California? Like, it looked like a pretty pretty nice neighborhood. No, fuck that. <laughs> Also, was that his boat? Because oh. that was his boat. Yo, I'd be pissed. <laughs> Did you ever think about that? Like, no, I, I just assumed he was like completely wrong. That's fucked up. But, yeah, like what the fuck? Why was your back door open, bro? I don't know, man. Like that. That's why. That's what made me dislike the that dude whose house it was. Because like you're over here pissed at me. Yeah, sure. I walked into your house, <laughs> but why the fuck is your back door open? It's your fault. Yeah. yeah. If your back door was locked, I would have been like, oh, shit, this is probably the wrong house. Also, why did Ben Affleck try to run to the front door? He should have just gone through the back. Like, yeah, he yeah, knows his way out the back. Exactly, yeah. Plus, he's got his car back there. Yeah, dude, where are you going? Uh, That's crazy. Man, when, when he was getting hit on at the bar by that white chick, yeah. I was like, oh, man, his luck is finally turning around. Like, right. he's going to get some. <laughs> now, not what I expected. Nope, rock bottom. That was such a good, good, like, rock bottom to the movie, man. But overall... 
his drinking habit and like not even a habit like addiction really uh-huh. um and the way they told a story without really telling the story i i love that about the film mm-hmm. and it also opened up a bigger conversation of like mental mental health and that's kind of what i was kind of aiming towards because you don't know what everyone's going through especially people at bars right because we even uh, off air before we started filming we were talking about um how weird is it to like go to a bar at oh, like six in the morning right you know but the people that go to the bar that early or like even like just drink at a bar by themselves you don't know what they're going through in life right just like how we didn't know that ben affleck was going through that right because well, the first time we saw him drinking at the bar by himself we just thought he was just like a fucking drunk you know yeah, but sure. then like with all the context of the film you're like he was drinking because you know he his fucking son died he got a divorce his dad never loved him like yeah. he like all these reasons you know this man was definitely on some shit yeah yeah and then yeah that that made me think like damn like the local bar that like i used to go to like there's people that go and drink there by themselves like right. there's like regulars you know but like you don't know their story and then obviously they're not going to tell you if it's that drastic like right. that's so interesting to me like everyone has a different story but then like okay like your day like how you were saying like uh friday beer hits different right because you had a, like a shitty week at work or whatever right but like everyone at the bar goes to the bar to socialize right mm. but everyone's coming from different like right like paths. everyone has their own reason why they're there right yeah and then everyone has that like uh that thing in common mm-hmm. which is beer yeah. and i think that's so cool like not even on like a weird like dark way to think about it but like it's so cool how drinking something can make you like be social with like a group of people right like a group of random random people that you would normally not like even be in the same place as right i think that's cool i think i worded that weird but you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i get you you guys get it right yeah you get it i get it also do you drink while you watch us Ooh, that's an interesting one yeah i'm curious leave a comment below if you're of legal drinking age no. yeah leave a, a a beer uh emoji a little beer emoji somewhere that'd be dope to like yeah, that's interesting meet up with listeners and drink with them <laughs> it's all the way back to the <laughs> all the way back to square one right um so that, overall yeah. how many beers out of five would you give this film damn how many five beers being the five? best i'd give it i'd give it four yeah solid four beers Ooh. i'd give it four i i like I dislike that it's like a, a sports film where like the coach and it's like a redemption story because that part's predictable. I really like how they told the story, mm-hmm. and I like the depth that they gave to uh, the main character, to Ben Affleck's character. He, yeah. Let me see if I can not butcher this son of the way out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very uh, BoJack Horseman esque character. He's a horse. Yes. No. no. I've never seen the, the movie. Uh, uh, show. <laughs> I've never been to Uber I Driver. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that. I've never been to Uber Driver. Uh, yeah, so I guess for people that haven't seen it, BoJack Horseman, you know, it's... Uh, Jesse Pinkman. Yes, he's in it. Um, yeah. Yeah, Aaron Paul. We're on the same page here. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's like an animated show of like anthropomorphic am- animals. <laughs> <laughs> And Anim- what? No. Animals. No. Bro, hold on. Animals. Animo- anim- anamorphic. Anim- what did you say? Anamorphic animals. Anamorphic. Oh, yeah. like the books. Sure. Wait, remember the series? There yeah, was I know a, what you're uh, talking about. Ana- yeah. Animorphs. Metamorph- metamorphosis? Metamorphosis? No. no, I'm just trying. Animorphosis. <laughs> I'm just saying words now to throw <laughs> you off. <laughs> no, but yo, there was a book no, series. No, that is a book series where oh, like, thank a, God. a okay, person cool. turns into an animal and they could turn back and forth. The Animorphs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. And then I said Metamorphosis to throw you off. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, so BoJack Horseman, it, know, it's a show that this. deals a lot with, like, depression and different types of mental issues and uh, all, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But they, it's so happy and vibrant because it's like a an animation, you know? Oh, shit. And so it, all the characters, like, you know, one of them is, like, just clinically depressed one of them has like a huge like ego problem one of them's like a control freak you like they they all have their own kind of flaw they all have their own flaws okay but none of them are 
inherently bad people. And I feel like Ben Ben Affleck's character is the same way. Like he has all these flaws and like, you know, he's very defensive, he gets angry really quickly, like he lashes out at people, but he's not a bad person. Right. And you could see this like throughout the film, like you know, he goes out of his way to help the kids on his team, like he helps make them better people. And so he's like doing good things. And I, I like I like when a show or a movie shows that. Like just because you may have like some negative tendencies or like you have depression or you have something like you're still capable of helping other people. Yeah. And that's dope. So that was, yeah, they really, they really showed that in his character for sure. Um, even, even when he was fucking up at the school, he was doing it with a good intention. Like he would drink in his office, mm -hmm. but he would never like, mm -hmm drink with the kids were there or like yeah or like be mean to the kids yeah. or like be excessively like fucking rude or whatever right um but yeah dude that shit's dope damn that's cool i gotta check out that that series yeah you should check it out it's uh it's all done so you could you could binge the whole thing all nah, six nah, all nah. six seasons or seven seasons i still gotta watch uh freaking rick and morty too well there you go you could binge them back to back <laughs> um yeah so how, how many beers out of five do you get man this? So, I don't know. I was thinking about it just now. I think I would give it like a three and four gulps. Three, four gulps Three and beers a and a four. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> three beers and uh, four gulps. Okay. So, so you're almost almost there, but Almost at four, but not really. Okay. Um, just because, like, it was good. It was really good. I love the, the ending, but just the they could have done a better job with the basketball aspect of it. Okay. Um, and it was like a sports movie, which I get that it's very like, you know what's going to happen. Right, but, very cut and dry. But like you said, the uh, character buildup for the players could have been a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and even like the relationship the coaches had with the players could have been a lot stronger, I think. Yeah. Because there was a scene at the end where uh, they're playing in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, we're going to do this for Coach Cunningham, you know? Yeah. And it's like, wait the fuck didn't you guys just kick him off the team like what do you <laughs> right so there was little bits like that where i was like all right this is this could have been a lot better because I, again i was comparing it to coach carter mm -hmm. and then i don't know have you ever seen the movie the rookie it's a baseball movie uh, i don't think i have oh well there <laughs> well, goes that no nah, 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 nah. well so that, i was just comparing it to other sports films but yeah three three beers with four gulps yeah. maybe a shot in the lord <laughs> i think actually and now that you mentioned that and now that i thought about it more so i actually looked it up so the movie is an hour and 48 minutes long and that that's that kind of made me be a little bit more lenient on it because like Cause it was so, pretty short yeah well it, it was yeah it was kind of getting up there like this isn't like an avengers type movie where you could get away with it being like three hours long or like star wars or something you know oh i see so like i feel like Actually, you know what? I might go to like four <laughs> four beers and, and a couple gulps because it, it left me with, yeah, I was disappointed. Like I felt like there was more you could you could explore. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it left me wanting more. So, Ooh. you know, that shows to me that, you know, it really sold me on the idea and I got invested in that world that they created. Yeah. And I, I want to know more about it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, yeah. Yeah. Four, four and a half, four and uh, the half of the other beer. Then nah, I'm still keeping three. No, nah, but damn. I guess any any other like closing um, thoughts or yeah, I gotta ask you a serious, honest question. Mm -hmm. And this is on camera, so you can't lie. Did you, you can't lie on camera? Did you feel like drinking a beer after you saw this movie? Uh, or were you like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna ease back on drinking? Yeah, well, I definitely didn't want a beer. No, no. Damn, I think I, I, I thought the total opposite. I was like, "Damn, dude, I, I want to crack a beer now." In wow. memory of my boy Jack Cunningham. No. Shit, maybe I don't know. I think <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe Shit, like maybe I the, was a little hungry. <laughs> maybe it, I was. Uh, maybe at the like in the middle of the film, like when he's like the first way through that thirty rack. Oh I was man, like, he's bro, tapping like, them. This is the yeah. dude. Like this is the guy you gotta crack some beers with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At at like at that point in the film, I think by the end of it, I I didn't finish wanting a beer anymore all right that's fair 
Nah, I was I was craving a beer after. Yeah. I was like, yo, man, damn, all those beers he was drinking. And then he goes to the bar and has like the draft beers. Man, this guy's living life. Nah, <laughs> which he really wasn't though. Um, so I guess l- last thing real quick because I just remembered. Uh, you mentioned that there was a point in the film where the audience was reacting a certain way and that you had done that same thing or something similar. Oh, yeah. So um, it, it goes to the uh, bar scene yeah. where um, he's oh, – damn, I don't want to make this up, but there was – I forgot which bar scene it was where um, he was like uh, – he goes in and then – the bartender like knows him already yeah so then like it was the scene where like he goes in and he's like oh like jack you know uh he's oh like i'll fix there. you up yeah right? i'll fix you up yeah and then that's where he was like all right like this is like enough that was know? like the first time he yeah tried to turn his life but around. to me it was like damn like i have a bar that i used to go to where it was like yeah. all right like you know the, those are the bars and they know what, what i'm gonna drink and like, yeah. they know then it's like not even just that scene itself but it was just the whole idea of being a regular at a bar yeah and then because with us like it was like all right we're we're so used to just like going to this bar and like the bartenders know us and like all right uh you know people there sitting across you yeah. know and like if someone's missing you're like oh damn like what's up with this guy like you yeah. know where, is he out of town like and then it's weird it, it came to a point where there was a. Uh, a guy that that passed away from the bar mm-hmm. and then when we found out that he passed away the night of his funeral we all went to the bar and then the seat that he used to sit at the whole like ever since like we met him that seat no one could sit there and uh-huh. they left the, his favorite beer and it was like a memory of him you know yeah but it was it, it i mean we still go to this bar but it, it was just the idea of having that local bar that you go to and everyone knows you and then with him i mean with him it was more extreme because like this man would get dragged out of there every night, right. you know? But it was just like, damn. At which point do you drink so much that you know regulars at a bar? That you become like you a, regular, a regular, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's so then I was like, damn. And then the people watching, because there was, I don't know if you noticed, there was a, a dad behind yep, us. I noticed. Kids. Oh, yeah. my God. This <laughs> motherfucker was talking, like talking nonstop. And then he would be like, oh, yeah, he's a drunk. Like, oh, man, like, well, that's because he's drinking. Oh, yeah, this guy's drunk. Like, that like, bro, damn shut phone. the fuck no. up. Like, we, wa- yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, bro, we know he's drunk. Like, shut up. And then I felt like he was judging him to the point where I was like, damn, like, I felt like I was oh, being judged. So now. that, like, at that scene yeah, where you're talking dude. about being a regular. Or, like, you know, where he was, like, drinking those beers and it's like, mm-hmm. all right, well, shit, like, that goes back to what I was saying, how you don't know someone's story and you don't know why they're drinking. Right. So you shouldn't judge the amount of alcohol that they're drinking and rather, like, just talk to them and be social with them. Yeah. Because if you're drinking alone at a bar, chances are you're having a shitty day. Uh-huh. And, you know, and then that goes back to that, that other bar where uh, that we used to go to. Like, that we've met people there and, like, now we, like, you know, we know them. But, yeah. like, I don't know. It's just this whole weird um what's the word i'm looking for um it's just like a weird not theory but like just a bar world is it's different Uh when you're looking out looking in when you're standing out looking in because you judge people that are sitting there by themselves rather than when you're a regular and you know people there and then you know like you know people's stories when joe smith is having a shitty day and you're like all right cool this guy's gonna get drunk but you know let him be you know right and I think that's when I was listening to the people in the back of watching the movie and they were judging. I was like, these motherfuckers, man. Like, dude, this guy's having a shitty day. Like, right. just let him drink. So just in so. general, try to make less snap judgments yeah. of people and try to judge people for who they are. Right. So I had a connection with Ben Affleck in the whole drinking sense where I was like, damn. I mean, I wouldn't drink that much, but I know. That 30 rack? <laughs> ah, bro. I, actually, I've never finished a 30 rack. I came close to finishing a sixer. No, yeah, no, nah. <laughs> no, nah, but like, you know, just the, the amount of drinking he did in, in the film was like relatable because I mean, we all, I'm sure you've drank a 30 wreck. No, nah, look at me judging you. No, nah. uh, not by myself. Well, but <laughs> like close, you know, like everyone's drank enough to know what it feels like to be that drunk. Right. Ooh, does that make sense? Bars. <laughs> Everyone's drank enough to know what it's how like it feels to, to Wow, be you just changed it again? 
Anyway, I'm going on a rant here, but listen to Trader Without a Radio every week, Monday through. I mean, you could listen whenever you yeah, want. Yeah, you can listen whenever you that's want. That's the beauty of a fucking internet Girl, based so podcast. Dope, dude. You could just play it whenever Tune you want. Whenever the fuck you want. Nah. Uh, this has been Trader Without a Radio. I think we, we're, we're good on time. Yeah, right? yeah, we're good. Um, I like how you started ending and then you checked. I know. I was like, oh, shit, wait, are we ending it now? Um,. Yo, we got some shit in the works uh, as far as uh, merch goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. Are we releasing that this week? This week? This week. Oh, this, look at you. This week. <laughs> no. This week. No. Yeah, I think we could do it this week. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, we got some uh, some some light bills to pay. We got... Uh, those lights aren't cheap. No. Those light- <laughs> Actually, these lights have lasted us a really long time. Well, there you go. We need, we need some money in the light budget. Yo, we should start a Patreon. Should, yeah. Nah, look at you thinking it's a bad idea. What, like, what do you need to start a Patreon? Oh, uh, you could just sign up. Well, I guess fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need people to. Yeah. Yeah, let me rephrase that. You don't need anything to start a Patreon, but you need a bunch of things for a successful Patreon. Yo, that's crazy. Who do you think came up with Patreon? It was like, oh, I I know who it was. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah. I I forgot the dude's name, but he, it was this like um indie uh musician artist oh shit he's like a I don't know, he plays guitar he plays drums he plays keyboard and his then girlfriend now wife uh would do vocals oh nice yeah so they just they have a band but they're called the patreons no. yeah the patreons well, no, the patreonics right Ooh, ooh, that'd be sick <laughs> and uh yeah he he launched patreon mainly as a way to allow his fans to support them directly basically yeah. rather than having to wait for the show and right yeah and then yeah it just blew up from there that's sick that's dope well guys uh it's been trade without a radio you already know how it goes this week we sold our radio for dun 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 some uh what was it jordan 11s and Woo! uh and the uh, fresh uh new balance ball hell yeah uh yeah tune in next week where we find out if renee drank a 30 rack or not <sighs> i didn't no, well, I didn't. No. All right, guys, see you next right, week. You wanted to take the, the credit? I know. <laughs>